Because life has no reset button, think, think safety. 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 Uh, well, we were studying the impact of a national communication project in Egypt that was aimed at increasing public awareness of the threat of avian outbreaks and ways to respond to that, including um, basic hygiene practices, uh, hand washing, containment of chickens, and so on. And the project, the, the campaign, uh, was a, a massive coordinated effort, coordinated effort by the government of Egypt that was able to reach um, almost 90% of the public with the television spots in a space of uh, one or two days. Um, in response to that massive exposure, there were very high levels of response, um, high percentages of people who adopted at least one or two protective behaviors as a result of seeing the campaign. Behaviors that you can take to be uh, to uh, a lot of protective behaviors that you can take. It's not a single behavior that uh, uh, that protects you, but uh, you have a number of behavior options. And so the campaign promoted uh, a, a range of things, of ten or twelve different behaviors that would help to reduce the risk of of uh, bird to human transmission. And so people were able to choose behaviors that were most compatible with their lifestyle and with their needs. I think that may be the case in Egypt. Uh, we've heard some other reports from countries in, in this forum where uh, awareness of the threat of avian flu is relatively low. But one thing that the Egypt campaign was able to do was to create that very broad base of awareness of the, of the outbreak in a very short period of time. And then that gives you a foundation for other kinds of messaging, like what can you do to respond? Right, the, the efficacy messages that I referred to in my, in my presentation. Um, if you can make it clear what people can do to address that threat, that, uh, the, the new threat, the emerging threat, um, then people feel that they, they really can do something. Uh, they're, not, they're not hopeless uh, in the face of a, of a dire public uh, health emergency. A lot, of, uh, a lot of public health professionals uh, assume that doing communication is a fairly simple thing. Um, you can put messages into posters or brochures and as long as you can deliver them to your audience they will have an effect. In fact, uh, designing effective communication is a, is a fairly difficult process. Um, not difficult in the sense that, that only specialists can do it, but difficult in the sense that there are systems and procedures for doing it properly. So um, projects like Egypt that had, the, uh, that had the, the opportunity to plan ahead and to think strategically were able to take advantage of some of the, the theories of behavior change that we know um, uh, um, contribute to message effectiveness. Um, but a, a key issue here is deciding precisely what to focus on. There are many kinds of messages that you could deliver in a, in a case like this. We've heard of, of many different aspects of avian and pandemic flu preparedness. Uh, there are economic aspects, there are political aspects, there are individual behavioral aspects. Um, communication campaigns need to focus. They need to make some sacrifices in order to focus effectively on the, the behaviors that or the changes that are most likely to be beneficial. So um, a coordinated effort is important so that stakeholders can, you know, can come to consensus on what the most important focus for a program should be.